What's up guys, Coach Matt and YouGoProBaseball.com and today's pitching question comes from Lakari Elion and he asks, how much pressure on the baseball should you have as in should you hold the ball tight or loose with the slider? If tight, which finger should have the most pressure on it? That's a great question, Elion, and I got a great answer for you. In fact, I'm not just gonna tell you the grip pressure on the slider, but I wanna share with you the five filthiest pitches that I know, uh, the grip pressure on those, finger pressure, how to hold them tight or loose, explain all those five pitches so you can add them into your pitching arsenal and start dominating those hitters. But before we get into this video, I wanna say thank you to Baseball Life 463 for sponsoring this video. Baseball Life 463 is a Canadian baseball lifestyle brand that offers quality apparel to ballers who wanna look good and feel good off the field. 10% of all proceeds go to youth baseball via sponsorships and equipment. Click the link below to check out their whole line. So first, let's talk about tight versus loose grip. Um, pretty much on all of my pitches, you hear coaches a lot of the time saying, you wanna be loose, hold it like an egg, right? I've never found this to be beneficial. I've never felt good with this. I've never had control with any pitch when I'm being real loose like an egg like this, right? Having this much uh, space in between the ball. That doesn't feel good at all. It doesn't feel powerful, no matter what pitch I was throwing. Um, I always held it a lot tighter. Um, for example, let's just go to the slider because that was your first question. On the slider, look at how much space I have in here. Not a whole lot at all, really none. Maybe a tiny bit there you can see. But I'm pretty tight. Now I'm not choking this ball, I'm not like squeezing it like I'm trying to crush it, but I've got a good firm grip on it, right? I wanna be pretty firm. I'd say my, my pressure, like as far as if I was squeezing 100% and not squeezing at all, I'd say I'm probably more towards like the 60, 70% range as far as grip pressure, okay? Um, and that's on all my pitches. That was on my sinker, my slider. Um, fork ball is a little bit different. We'll get into it because that's one of the pitches I want to show you. But let's talk a little bit more about the finger pressure on the slider because that was your question. Now for the slider, for me, I would grip it right here on this part of the horseshoe. So I'm right here. And I put this middle finger right there, hook that horseshoe, pointer finger goes right next to it, thumb in line with the middle finger, this way with more baseball coming out this side of the ball than this side. So that was my grip. Now, the pressure is more on my middle finger, but it's not pressure in the way that I've always heard coaches explain it. To me, coaches always explained it like, put more pressure on that middle finger when you're throwing it. But to me, I'm not trying to put more pressure on that middle finger. I'm just into that ball more, into that lace more this way, and the thumb is kind of hooked there, so it's putting more pressure into that finger. I'm not like pushing harder down with that finger. Does that make sense? It's just the way that my grip is on holding the ball that I have more pressure right on the inside part of this middle finger here. I've also got some good pressure right here on the thumb. The po uh, pointer finger right here is on the ball. It's not loose. You know, but it's it's not, uh, I'm not as hooked. That's how I, I would like to describe this pressure as being more hooked into the ball than the middle finger, okay? Or the middle finger is more hooked than the pointer finger. Um, so that's how that feels, okay? As far as throwing that ball, I'm just trying to get those four laces moving at the angle that I want the pitch to break on. So if I'm trying to get some downward angle this way, I'm trying to throw that right here and get those four seams moving that way so the ball breaks down late with some depth on it. Now let's talk about the sinker, because that was my best pitch, um, and it's a great pitch, and I recommend pretty much anyone throwing the sinker. What I would do is I would put my pointer finger right here, right here on the skinny part of the, uh, where the laces come together, pointer finger right here on this lace, middle finger right next to it. Now I'm hooking that ball right here with the inside part of my pointer finger. So that's where the pressure to me is. Now again, it's not pressure as in I'm pushing down uh, with that finger, but it's just hooking it. So I'm kind of I'm kind of hooking into that lace, right? When I'm setting my finger into that lace, I hope that makes sense. Thumb straight underneath this, right? More ball coming out this side of the ball. And uh, again, you can see I'm pretty tight, not a whole lot of space on the thumb underneath. I've got some good pressure on the thumb right here. Uh, again, probably at that 60, 70% as far as uh, grip pressure overall but the pointer is definitely more hooked or more pre finger pressure than the middle finger, okay? Again, I'm not really pushing on it, it's just more hooked, okay? Uh, that's the best way I can really explain the finger pressure, pressure in my opinion. For the sinker, all we're trying to do is, we're trying to, especially me, I was, I was a, like a straight sidearm guy, I'm trying to rip right over top of that ball this way. So I'm trying to get that pointer finger to roll right off the top, 
this way and that middle finger to catch last last second and get some good pronation right over the ball, rip over it. And I'm trying to get this movement going down and arm side, mostly down, but a little bit of arm side. Guys who throw a two seam, very similar to my sinker, except guys who are a little bit higher with their arm slot might throw a two seam. So they might get more arm side movement than depth. For me, I was trying to get more depth than arm side movement. So you could take that for the two seam as well if you throw a two seam. Now let's talk about the change up, okay? The change up is a little bit different. Circle change up we're gonna talk about. So I used to grip the circle change up like this. I would hook the middle finger right here, ring finger on the other side of the horseshoe on the open side. Put that circle on this side of the ball, thumb right here. Got a little bit more space in this one, right? This one, my grip pressure isn't as much. I definitely feel it more in the fingers. You can see I'm not down in the palm at all. I'm not very deep, right? So definitely different than the first two pitches I was explaining. And I'd say probably uh, grip wise, pressure wise, I'm more in the 50% range on this one, 50, maybe even 45% range here. So a little bit less grip pressure, more of a feel pitch, right, for me. Um, thinking back to the sinker and the, and, the, and the slider as well, I wanna say that I was max effort on those pitches too. So there was no feel in those pitches. I was throwing, I, of course you have to have feel in any pitch that you're throwing, but I was throwing it as hard as I possibly could, both of those pitches. Um, this one, I'm taking a little bit off, right? Change up, we're trying to throw this pitch slower. Now you hear coaches all the time say, don't sew your arm down when you're throwing the change up, they're gonna see that. Uh, they're pro yes, if you slow your arm down a lot, they're gonna see that, but guess what? You have to slow your arm down a little bit, right? One way to slow the pitch down without slowing your arm down or helping slow the pitch down while slowing your arm down just a little bit is taking a little bit of, off of the grip, right? So we're here and all we're trying to do with the, with the the uh, change up for me, I was very similar to the sinker since uh, my arm slot was here. I'm just trying to rip over top of it with these fingers. I get the pressure on the middle and the pointer finger and try to rip over both of those two seams that way. That would give me that depth and the arm side movement. Also that change of speed that we're looking for on a change up. So that was a change up. Now the fourth pitch I wanna talk about is the fork ball. And I would just split this ball right down the middle of the ball, no laces right here. And basically what I wanted that ball to do is slip out of my fingers. Thumb pressure, uh, sometimes I would have the thumb on, sometimes I wouldn't even have the thumb on at all. The pressure I feel is inside of the fingers right here, uh, more towards the middle of the finger, this part of the finger right here, but in the inside obviously on both fingers. And all I'm trying to do is feel this ball slip out of, the, of my fingers here. So I'm throwing it and I'm trying to slip it out of my fingers at release point. I'm not forcing it to slip out. All I'm doing is creating enough arm speed and you have to have good feel with this pitch to understand how much arm speed you need to give to get it to slip out. Um, when you do that and you come straight through it, you're gonna get like a knuckle drop effect, okay? You could also tilt this pitch in with the pointer finger just a little bit and you'll get a knuckle down arm side movement. You could also tilt this pitch with the middle finger side and you'll get a knuckle glove side movement. So you can play with this pitches, uh, the way it moves by the way you pronate or, or move your wrist, your wrist angle at release point, you can make this pitch move different ways. As goes with all of your pitches, play with your uh, wrist angle at release point because that's gonna be a huge way to manipulate the pitch uh, to your benefit. The last pitch I wanna talk about and as far as finger pressure and grip pressure goes uh, is the dead fish. The dead fish is just basically a BP fastball. And you may be asking, why would you ever want to throw a BP fastball to a live hitter? And I thought the same thing when I learned this pitch. I was like, why, do, why would I want to do that? Why would I just want to throw a BP fastball in there? Let me tell you my story. I was in the middle of a game and the coach came out. There was a runner on first base. Pitching coach came out and he said, hey, I want you to throw a BP fastball here. I want you to throw a dead fish. Said, what the heck is a dead fish? He said, you, uh, you just move your thumb up a little bit on your sinker. Um, and you take a little bit off, just throw it in there nice and easy. And I was like, what? I was blown away, like, why do you want me to do that? He's like, no, listen, he's gonna, he's gonna roll over it. We're gonna get a double play right here. And I was like, all right, whatever. So he, he left, he went back, and the catcher was like, hey, nice and easy, just turn it over, you know, turn it over. So all I did was I took my sinker, my sinker's thumb was normally here. I just slid that thumb up a little bit here, a little bit less pressure overall. So I'd probably be in this one, I'm probably in the 50% the range as far as total grip pressure and uh, and then I just try to rip right over top of it and sure enough I threw the pitch 
BP fastball, threw it right down the middle, let the ball move a little bit. It was probably seven, eight mile an hour slower. And the guy, boom, ground ball to the shortstop, double play out of the inning. I was so surprised. And every once in a while, when I had the right hitter up there with a guy on first base, when we needed two outs, I would go ahead and throw that dead fish. So there you go, that's the fifth pitch. That, those are five pitches that you could use, try to mess around with, play around with the grip pressure, play around with the grips, play around with your wrist angle at release point, uh, and maybe add one of those to your pitching arsenal. I hope you like that video. Drop down in the comments below. Let me know which one of these pitches you're going to steal. And also let me know if there's any type of videos that you want to see pitching related, baseball related, pitching grips, pitching drills, pitching velocity, pitching accuracy, whatever you want to talk about, drop them down there below. And if you got a good idea, I'll make a video about it. Thank you so much. Don't forget to check out Baseball Live 463. Until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, check this out. Baseball Life 463 gave me an extra shirt to give away to you guys. All you have to do is go to their website. It's the first link in the description below. Check it out. Come back. Let me know you went over there and checked out their stuff in the comments below. And if I choose your comment randomly and you went over there, you're going to get the free shirt. So thank you so much. Comment below.